a survey conducted by the British Red Cross found out that only 7% of people in the UK feel confident in carrying out first aid. Joining me now is Gary Joins from St John Ambulance to fill us in on the basics we should all know. Many thanks for joining us. Now, what do we class as first aid? Um, something that we do um, before we move on to something serious. For, for instance, if someone's got a cut, wash it, put a simple dressing on. That's basic first aid. Nothing serious, we're not doing operations, anything like that at all. It's just a matter of doing something. Now, for example, if I found somebody and they'd had a cut, I don't know how to assess if that needs first aid or if it needs stitches. So where would I go to learn this? Well, come to us. Uh, that's the first place too. There's many organisations within the, the country that teach first aid. Um, St John at the moment are offering free packages. Um, come along and you get taught first aid for free. Well, that was my next question is, do we have to pay for it? So as a rule, normally, how much would we pay for a first aid course? It depends on what type of course you're looking at. Uh, if it's an industrial course, first aid at work, you can pay anything up to £200-£250. Um, for a one-day course, you can pay something around about £50, depending on what type of course you want. Come down to something very basic where you're looking at a few hours, we do a free course. OK, now, I asked you to bring along a first aid kit because I've got one of these in my cupboard at home. You know what, I've no idea what's in it. So what should we have in our first aid kit? Basic items that you want to use to stop a bleed. So um, bandages? Yeah, bandages. These are bandages. You can see there's the very different sort of sizes. Yeah. The plasters. The good old the plasters. plasters. OK. For, for a minor bleed. OK. Very simple. The only thing wrong with plasters sometimes, you might if somebody's allergic to it. Well, you'd know that at home anyway. Right. Um, I wear a pair of gloves. Right. Obviously. I do for applied Miffol's tan, but yeah. I don't think I've yeah. got them for this. Yeah, nice <laughs> pair of gloves. Just stop infection getting onto me. No, no, no other problems. Um, We've got triangular bandages. OK. Um, so, basically, bandages, plaster, yes, gloves. Yeah. Now, how do we stick these bandages? Because I did hear somewhere we can't use safety pins anymore. Well, at the end of the day, there's two ends to the dressing, and the two ends will tie up. So it's as simple as that. Simple as that. If you start using safety pins, you might just stick, and you then got a secondary problem. Fabulous. Don't now, very self-indulgent question from me. Um, two weeks ago, I got stung by a wasp. I had no idea what to do. What should I have done? I was in agony. This time of year, they're at the height, aren't they? Um, a wasp thing is, is, is very simple. It sticks you, it puts poison into you, and away it goes. Uh, the easiest thing to do is very simple. Don't do anything, clean it, put a dressing on. However, the big problem is, are you allergic? Because if you get an allergic reaction, slightly different. We've then got to start looking at going to hospital if it's serious enough. And just very quickly, um, do, does a bee sting differ from a wasp sting in how we treat it? Yeah, a bee sting, uh, a bee, when it stings you, it leaves its sting in. It's a little barb. What we don't want to do is that and pull it out and squeeze it. Neither do we want to use tweezers. The easiest thing is... Finger, go across and push it out. So just push it out with your fingernail? Yeah, go across. Across? Yeah, just like that. Right. Use a fingernail or a nice piece of plastic, something very similar, where you can take it out. OK, so clean a Clean it once again. A bee sting you need to remove, yeah. a wasp sting, clean it and leave it. Yeah. If only you had been there. Thank you very much indeed, sir. <laughs> very usable.